Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In today's video, I am going to show you how to use an airbrush to do some shading. We're going to cover some basic techniques. Let's get into it right now. So before we start shading, the first thing I want to discuss is that we've got a double action airbrush here. This is the GSI Creos PS770. We need to focus on using that double action, meaning you've got to press down for air and you pull back for paint. So you always want to keep that trigger pressed down and then you want to go paint on, paint off and make sure you return that trigger back into the start position so that you shut the paint off correctly. So that's very important and that's your double action technique which is essential to do any airbrushing with a double action airbrush. So remember, air on at all times, pull back for paint and then shut it back off again. So you'll also notice that I've removed the air cap from the front of this airbrush. I like to do this because it makes it easier to pick off any tip drying. And if you need more info on tip drying, I've got a video covering that. I'll pop that link in the description below. But this also just allows for better general airbrushing. The one thing that I will say though, is when you do have it removed, make sure that you always put your airbrush back in the holder when you're finished with it. Okay, so the key with shading is you want to be a fair distance away from the surface. You don't want to be up close because look what happens. If I'm up close and I pull back, right, I'm going to get a much heavier shadow, all right? So a lot harder to control when you're up close. So what I want you to do is be further away from the surface. It'll feel a little bit alien to start with because you're not touching the surface as you would with say a pencil or something like that, but you want to be further away and then pull back on the trigger to release the paint and you'll get a nice soft shade. Okay, so doing that shadow again, from the side view, you can really see how far away I am from the surface. Makes it a lot easier to do your shadows and it also allows you to build up a shadow. So for instance, if I go here, I can go nice and light and just build it up gradually. And I can keep coating it to go heavier and heavier in order to make that shadow go darker. So you want to do that bit by bit. So nice and light and gradually build up rather than just sort of coming in and being really heavy with it. You want to use the lighter option because you can always go darker. And by doing it gradually, the air from your airbrush is also drying the paint on the surface. It'll allow the paint to dry evenly and less chance that you're going to have a wet spot that you could potentially blow out and ruin your artwork. Okay, so that's some just real basic shading. So now I want to explain to you when you are doing your basic shadows, how to build up a flat tone, okay? So the key with building up a flat tone is again, you want to be a fair distance from the surface. So same as what I was doing before. And you want to do your first pass. Okay, so that's our first pass. Now to build up an even shaded tone over this page, without getting any gaps in between it, you need to do what's known as the 50-50 overlap. So if this is our spray, the next spray needs to be 50% overlapped upon the first spray. And then the next spray needs to be 50% overlapped. I'll do a demonstration with the airbrush in a minute. Hopefully this lets you understand. If I do it this way, it might be easier for you to see. So you can see that this one is 50% overlapped onto our first tone and then 50% overlapped onto this tone. Okay, so you need to have that 50-50 overlap right the way through to get a nice even tone. If for some reason you do not, and I'll do this deliberately just to show you on here. So let's say I don't do a 50-50 overlap. This is what you're gonna get. You can see we've got a gap through there, okay? So I'll show you now in this area here how to do a nice even shaded flat tone using the 50-50 overlap method. So from a distance, have the air on, paint on, paint off, 50-50 overlap, paint on, paint off, 50-50 overlap, paint on, paint off, 50-50 overlap, paint on, paint off, and then paint on, paint off. And you can see we've got a nice even flat tone. That's what we're looking for. 
Okay, so now that you understand the principle of how to get a nice even flat tone and a 50-50 overlap, what I wanna do now is on this page, I wanna show you how to do a graduated uh, tone. So to do that, a couple of ways you can do it. You can definitely grab a mask, a paper mask like so, and put your fingers there and just dust over it. I'm using my 50-50 overlap and I'm gradually getting darker. As I'm moving along in this direction, I'm gradually building up heavier, heavier on here. So I've done my initial spray, then I've come up to here. Now I'm gonna come up to about there and then finish it off. And that's gonna give me a graduated tone. Again, working from a distance, so it's easier to control. Just another coat there. So now you can see, I've got a nice blend, graduated tone. Very easy to achieve using a mask. So not a problem at all if that's something that you can utilize. For whatever reason you're allowed to mask on that particular artwork, that will work fine. So let's say for instance now, I wanna do the same sort of thing, but I wanna do it freehand. Let me just show you how we can do that. So this time, it's gonna be a little bit different. You wanna start up nice and close, so almost touching the surface, and we wanna get a, put a vertical line in there. You can see even when I'm moving, I'm paint on, paint off. Okay, at the moment I've got my airbrush reasonably level, but the key now is in order to get it to graduate in this direction, I want to start to angle my airbrush. So the reason for that is when I spray directly on the surface, you can see that the overspray blends on either side, okay? So that's sort of my shadow and this is, this is part of the overspray. So you're almost getting that sort of an effect. Now if I'm angling, I can control my overspray to go into that direction. So, like so, and then as I move away, and angle it, you can see my overspray is moving along in this direction now, okay? And vice versa, if I go like this, and I'm up nice and close, and then I'm angling my airbrush to the other side, like so, the overspray is moving in that direction. So that's how I can control where the overspray is gonna go when I'm trying to do a graduated tone using a freehand method. So let's use that principle now to create a fade going across, similar to this, but without the mask. So I've started off level, and now I'm angling my airbrush. You can angle from the start, which will help to control a little bit of overspray off that edge, if you're comfortable with that. Again, always using that double action. All right, so just get a fairly thick tone to start with, and then I'm now bringing in my 50-50 overlap rule, and I'm gradually moving away, but I'm also angling the airbrush, and then that way I'm getting that graduated tone blending across. You can see there how that's nicely faded. Now granted, it's not as nice as that because I've got that mask and you probably notice that because I've got this mask, I can be further away from the surface and I can go nice and light, build that up as I go. Whereas this one, I've got to be up close to start with and then I've got to angle it and kind of move back. So it's a little bit more difficult to achieve, but you can also do this going the other way if you like, in any direction as you can see. So I'll just show you once again. So let's say we want this one to go up, then we're gonna angle like so, and just build it up. It's gonna take a bit of practice as well to get the feel for how your airbrush performs. But you can see how I can fade that tone up in that direction, not a problem. And I can virtually keep this overspray controlled in this area here, okay? So that's how we do freehand graduated tone and a mask graduated tone. Okay, so let's say we wanna shade a basic sphere now, all right? How are we gonna do that? I'll show you. 
So because I want to use this part of the template, and obviously to get a nice flat tone on this uh, circle, I need to be further away from the surface. So what I'm going to need to do is mask up around the area that I want to be spraying and protect that from the overspray. So let's go ahead and do that first. So in order to do that, I've got some plain sheets of copy paper. I'm just going to tear them in half, like so. Using some masking tape, you can do this in a different manner, but actually I'll show you if you do it like this. So stick that masking tape on there like so, and you can see I've left half of it exposed to pick up on that tack. And then this will mask off around this template. I'm going to continue that now with the other sheets to totally mask up around it. So now the template is prepped and we're ready to spray. So I'm going to hold that into place using my airbrush from a distance again. I want to dust very lightly. Whenever you're using a template, go extremely light. You can hardly see that. So you can see how light that is. So if I lift that up, you can take a look. Right, so less is more. And then what I want to do is, let's assume that our light source is here. We're going to get a shadow along this edge. So what you want to do is just, again, from a distance, lightly dust that in. You want to be soft with it. So I'm a fair distance away and I'm going paint on paint off. What you don't want to do, you don't want to find the paint and then move, right? Then you're going to get these heavier spots, which we don't want. So air on, paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off. All right, so my trigger's constantly moving and I'm moving with the airbrush. You can go a little bit heavier if you like. Feather that out. Okay, I'm not going to worry about a highlight because you know that's the lighter section. You can also do a graduated tone if you prefer, but this is just a nice, quick, easy way of doing it. And you can see that's already a nice sphere. Now we can add a little bit more to that by removing our paper mask. And we're going to expose what's called the positive part of the template, which is this part here. So I want to do a drop shadow under there, but you may notice that we've got a little bit of an issue where this is exposed. So yes, you could curl the template like this, but that's going to make it a lot harder to do. So what I would do, I would actually, using that paper mask again, mask that off. Now, be careful. If you go across like that, then you could get overspray here and here. You'd be surprised how far overspray travels. So I would actually curl it like so and like so. That way, just to control it and we're just protecting that area. So our light source being up here, we're going to get another shadow under here. So let's go and do that. So just dusting on this section here and then feathering it out to make it appear like we've got a drop shadow. So a little bit of a gap there. So to fix that up, I'm just going to re-line that up and you're going to have to darken it off a little bit more to get rid of that. And no problem. And there we have it fixed. You can see there's a little bit of a highlight there, but that's okay. I'll live with that. But just for the purpose of that demonstration, you can see how easily that was rendered. So just using the basic principles of what I just showed you today. So I do hope that you found this video helpful and that it helps you with your shading. Be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.